For hundreds of years, the people of the city of Jerusalem have been waiting, waiting for a king, waiting for a savior. Welcome to Lighthouse Kids Club. Today, we're going to hear the story of when Jesus finally came to Jerusalem. When that Savior finally came, would they really believe who he was? Today, we're going to answer the question, who is Jesus? And do you believe in him? If you want to find today's story, open your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 21. And you can follow along as we learn about Jesus coming to Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem was up on a hill, surrounded by a big wall to stop armies from coming and getting them. To get to Jerusalem, you had to follow this path up, and there was a gate. And during the day, normally, the gate would be open, and that's how you would get into the city. Now, Jesus, for the last several years, had been traveling around, preaching, teaching, and doing miracles. And now, after teaching so many people about God, teaching people about how they were a sinner, doing miracles to prove who he really was, he finally was coming to Jerusalem to do the most important thing that he would ever do. There is he knew he was going to head into Jerusalem. How was he going to get there? Now, normally, he just walked everywhere he went. But this day was special. How was he going to move? What transportation was he going to use to come into Jerusalem? Now, how could, maybe he should use a motorcycle. <laughs> no, motorcycles hadn't been invented yet. Maybe an elephant. Oh, that, that would be way too big. And they didn't have a lot of elephants around. What could he ride on coming into Jerusalem? He knew exactly. It was already in the Bible exactly how he would ride to Jerusalem that day. So he went to his uh, disciples, and, and they were talking. They were in a little town still outside of Jerusalem. They were planning to come into Jerusalem, and he needed a donkey to ride on. That's right, a donkey. Not an elephant, not a motorcycle, not a limousine, but a donkey. And he knew exactly where they could find one. Uh, he told them to go, and, and there would be this donkey right there. And not just any donkey, but here's this young donkey, a colt. Uh, this young donkey they would go and get, and, and uh, well, he didn't have it. How would they buy for it? He, he told his apostles simply this, you go, and when you come to where the donkey is, you just grab the donkey and start coming at the people there. Say, what are you doing? Why are you taking the donkey? Just tell them the master has need of it. Jesus already knew the heart of the person that owned the donkey, that he would be totally okay with Jesus using the donkey. Because unlike everyone, here was someone that knew that Jesus really was the king. And so they came, sure enough, and got the donkey for Jesus to be able to ride on coming to Jerusalem. Now, that day, believe it or not, had been prophesied hundreds of years before by a prophet. They could have picked up a scroll. This is what the Bible looked like back then and opened up a scroll written by Zechariah the prophet. And in it, they would have read about that day when the prophet said, Behold thy king, that's Jesus, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, means he does everything right. And having salvation. And you know what else uh, the prophet then prophesied? Exactly how he would be riding into Jerusalem that day, riding on a donkey. And so there he was, he got on a donkey. And his disciples were going to help him. But more and more people started coming. They had heard about the miracles that Jesus did. Many of them had heard Jesus preach, and they believed on him. And they came from all over the country, and they were coming to Jerusalem that day. And they knew that Jesus was coming, and they were excited. This was their king. This was their savior, the person that was going to save them. Oh, what do you do for a king? Uh, how do you help a king come to town? Well, first of all, he had just a donkey, and that donkey had never been ridden on before, so they needed a saddle. Well, they didn't have a saddle, but they just wanted to help Jesus. So you know what? They grabbed some of their own coats, and they laid them over the donkey for Jesus to sit on as a saddle. And, and then it was time. Oh, they were so excited about Jesus coming. We need to let everybody know who Jesus is and how important it is for Jesus coming into that city that day. So you know what they did is, as they heard Jesus was coming and they were getting ready, they got excited and they went. And now 
around Jerusalem, the kind of trees that a lot of them grew were these palm trees. Oh, palm trees have these long leaves. And so they started breaking off branches from the palm trees, and they were going to use them to praise God and celebrate as Jesus came. So as Jesus came, riding on that donkey, they had, they had their palm branches in their hands, and they started praising God and shouting. And here's Jesus, and he's walking. Now, donkeys walk on the dirt, and the dirt is dirty. And that's normal, you know, the, dirt, the hooves of the donkeys get. But Jesus is not normal. He was special. They knew he was the king. What can we do? Well, sometimes when someone's importance coming, you roll out a red carpet, you know, and they stand on the red carpet so they don't get their feet dirty. Well, they didn't have red carpets back then. What can we lay down in front of Jesus, the king of kings, to celebrate him coming? I know some of them took the palm branches they had. And as Jesus came, they laid down the palm branches. The donkey to walk across so the donkey wouldn't get its hooves dirty. Wait, more than that. Some of them said, oh, I can do better than that. And they grabbed their own coats. That's right. Their coat, you don't like your coat getting muddy and dirty, do you? In fact, you wouldn't like it if someone got your coat in the mud. But you know what they did? Because they loved Jesus. Many of them took their coats and laid down and made a path with palm branches and coats and let that donkey trample their own coat so that Jesus' donkey wouldn't get its hoof muddy. Well, that, those people, they knew who Jesus was. And they weren't just done just, uh, just putting things down. And here they were putting the coat down, laying it down, putting the palm branches down. And then they had palm branches in their hands. And they began to wave the palm branches and celebrate the fact that Jesus was coming. And this is what they said. They said, Hosanna. This is their praise they're giving to God. Blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Those people praising God, waving the palm branches, they knew who Jesus was. They knew this was the king that they had been waiting for for hundreds of years. This was the Savior. Oh, they were so excited. They were waving their palm branches. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hey, this year, are you excited about Jesus? Boy, it was only a week before Easter. And as next week we have Easter, it's all about Jesus. Are you excited about Jesus? Do you let other people know? Would you stand there and wave branches? You're so excited about Jesus? Or do you kind of keep Jesus to yourself? Boy, if you've got someone in your family, maybe a brother or sister, an aunt, an uncle, someone who doesn't know about Jesus, Easter is the perfect time to let people know. Hosanna, look, the king has come. This isn't any just regular person. This is Jesus. He is God. Become a man. Come here to save us. Well, here they, Jesus came through the gate of that city, walking in. But you know, there were some people in that city that didn't believe. They saw all the people waving the branches, praising God, telling about all the miracles Jesus did. And even though they heard about the miracles, even though they heard about people coming back from the dead and the things that Jesus had said and people saying who Jesus is, in their hearts, mm -mm, they didn't believe. They thought, this Jesus, this Jesus is just someone else. He's just a regular person. He can't save me. Uh, he's just a regular guy. He's not really God. Some of them didn't even think there was a God. Some of them didn't even think they could go to heaven. They didn't believe. And they stood there and, hmm, they scowled. They said bad things about Jesus. They were upset that these people were waving branches. And in fact, some of them, so much they didn't believe in Jesus. They, they thought, oh, this is bad that people are worshiping Jesus. And you know what they decided to do? They got together and they came up with a plan to kill Jesus. If Jesus came to your city, would you believe in him? Jesus does want to come. But why was Jesus coming that day? Why did he come to Jerusalem riding on that donkey? Oh, was he just coming uh, to have a fun time? Maybe come to a party? Maybe come in to see what was happening? No. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was coming to give you a gift. That's right. Jesus explained this a while before to a man one night. As he said this, For God so loved the world, that's all of us, that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him 
should not perish. That means they won't die. We won't go to hell because of our sins, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to save us, and that was God's gift. We often think about gifts. Oh, we get gifts on Christmas, and sure, we don't think about Easter being the day that Jesus gave us the ultimate gift. See, it's nice to give something that's worth some money, maybe something that's nice, but God gave His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. What Easter is really about is this gift. Jesus would come, and a week, less than a week later, just a, few, just a little bit of time l- l- later, Jesus would die on a cross to pay for our sins. He would die, and that would be his gift to us. Of course, he wouldn't stay dead. We're going to find out about that next week. Have you accepted this gift? Not this box, but I mean, have you accepted the gift of Jesus Christ? Jesus came to save you. All you have to do is believe. So how how can Jesus come and save me? Well, the Bible says we are all sinners, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You and I have done bad things, wrong things. Like many of these people here, they know the sinful things that they've done. Jesus was coming to take the punishment for them so they wouldn't have to die. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. All they would have to do to get that gift is to believe on Him. Here's the gift that God's offering you. But if you say, I don't don't want it. Sometimes someone may offer you a gift and you say, oh, I don't want that gift. I don't even believe, I don't think that's worth anything. I don't want it. And you reject the gift of God and don't believe, then you don't have that gift. You don't have everlasting life. And even though the Savior came, you're not saved. What does it take for you to get saved? It's so simple. You just need to ask Jesus to save you. He already died on the cross. We're going to hear this week about the story of how he suffered to pay for your sins. He died for you to pay for the wrong things you've done and came back from the dead having paid for all of your sins. If you simply ask him to forgive your sins, believing who he is and what he did, you can have everlasting life. If you've never done that, If you've never asked Jesus for the gift of everlasting life, you can receive that gift today simply by asking him. Simply pray this prayer to Jesus. Talk to Jesus the way you just talk to a friend. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done bad things. And I don't deserve to go to heaven. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe in him. Jesus, forgive my sins and give me the gift of everlasting life in heaven. Amen. That's it. Simply asking Jesus to save you, believing that you're a sinner and he died for your sins, is all it takes to have that gift of everlasting life. Now, on this day, many believed in who he was, but many didn't. Many people, even though here he came, the Savior, come to save them, They rejected him. Don't reject Jesus. Who is he? He's the Savior. He's the King. He is God become a man. And he came to Jerusalem that day riding on a donkey to save you from your sins. Thank you and come back to Lighthouse Kids Club this week as we find out about how Jesus saw the future and knew what would happen and how he gave his life for us and how he rose from the dead. We're going to find out what those people are able to do as they come together to have a plan to stop Jesus, to put him to death. What's going to happen? We'll find out. I'll see you next time here at Lighthouse Kids Club.